Hey, I'm Jonathan, and I live in London, England. Hey, I'm Jeff, and I live in Perth, Australia. Together, we are Echo and Sidetrack. We produce music that sounds like this. And this. And even this. This podcast is about music, creativity, and everything in between the giant space that separates us. Welcome to A Band Apart with Echo and Sidetrack. Hi, Jonathan. How are you doing? Hello, Jeff. I am good. That sounds like the most diplomatic response that you can give. It's like, I'm good. I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Um, Do you want more details? Are you actually good? Um, yeah, go on. Yeah, I'm... I am feeling... I'm feeling a little hot. My body temperature is um is changing. It's been a bit odd the last two days. And not like um not like I've got a temperature, but I feel um kinda like your it just your body temperature is fluctuating. And this happens to me sometimes. This happens like at least once every two months. Just like I'll have a couple of days where my body temperature will just be really odd. Uh Kind of like if you go for a run and you get really hot and you start sweating, but it's cold, and then you you really feel like your body temp is so different to your outside to the outside temperature. Yep. So that's that's how one way I'm feeling. Um, and then the other way is it's a Wednesday. I want to work on some music, and if I'm going to be honest, I don't really feel like doing a podcast, but we're doing one. And that's going to be great. Yeah, there's been a um, a few things that have uh, not allowed us to get together before this. So, here we are. Mm. And um, yeah, I'd say neither of us are probably extremely in the mood. We've both got other stuff we'd like to do. But here we are, like you say. I wanted to bring up a subject with you that is near and dear to my heart. And I know you are interested in it as well. Um, and I want to just share a little story with because it kind of has two arms to it. Um, I was, uh, I have been mixing some records in preparation for uh, playing the live stream with Carl on Friday, mm-hmm. um, and that's a skill that I definitely have lost. Mostly, not lost, but like you're like, oh, you know. And for the listener, mixing records is a lot more hands-on than mixing. Um, using a pair of CDJs or something more digital. Um, there's a lot more pitch fluctuation. That means like uh, tempo the record's going and it's a lot uh, more, yeah, just hands-on. Literally, you're touching the vinyl, the platter and things like that. To speed it up and to adjust really tightly, you know, adjusting the center of the platter to kind of just spin it a little bit more and, yeah. I've been doing that. And I've been, uh, you know, listening to what I've been doing and I've been like, that sounds pretty shitty or that sounds cool. Um, and so the two arms that I'm talking about is is the fact that like, what's your self-criticism like and personal feedback internally? Mm-hmm. And then I wanted to ask you, how you take feedback from others because I don't think I do it very well. There's that yawning again. Um, I don't think I um, do it very well sometimes and I often have to remind myself um, to view the criticism constructively. Um, But when it's yourself that's giving yourself the feedback that says this is not very good or something like that, it's hard to, um, you know, I don't know, it kind of, it can become a loop that loops back on itself. Okay. So, yeah, I was going to ask you how you, uh, yeah, handle feedback for starters. I think I handle feedback in, in two different ways. I'm not really that sure of too much in my life. 
Um, it's something that I actively have to work on to be more sure of myself and more sure of my work. And that's, you know, that's music and other work and that's everything. It's kind of like self-confidence. Um, so I, I think I've spent a large part of my life not being too sure about stuff and needing outside validation for things. So when it comes to feedback, I'm usually fairly open to it, but there are some things and I'm trying to learn this more and arguably it's a kind of rocky, rocky road to learn um, that I'm becoming more sure of in myself and in my work. So I'm more comfortable and confident to say that I don't like something or that I do like something or be more aware of when I feel a certain way about something rather than just usually what I've done in the past, someone giving feedback and going, okay, all right, that's like I have to take that on board. And I've I've because you because that other person knows better than you yeah somehow exactly so I've I've got some feedback uh, on some music I've made in the past three months from someone who we both really look up to and really value whose opinion that I disagreed with and I said that's really good feedback but I disagree with you and he's like that's fine. And I think it's important to recognize that you can disagree with feedback. It's important, and I think something that we both probably struggle with sometimes is to not take feedback personally. I think I'm pretty good at not taking it personally and accepting that that's another person's opinion Uh, because that's all it is. It's like things are so subjective with um, especially music feedback. Feedback for anything, it's just subjective. Unless I like, unless, yeah, it, I mean, it's all subjective. It's the same when I give criticism to someone else. You have to, I, I have to remind myself that it's not, it's not necessarily about being wrong or right. Things are very, very lit, like things aren't that black and white, sadly. It's just opinions. So, how do you then handle it when someone goes, oh, I don't really like what you've done? on this piece of music because that in turn is just their opinion. And so they go, I'm just going to keep it the way it is. And then you go, well, that, that's a, a piece of piece of shit. And so you, you become a, you have potential to become a bit of a, a stick in the mud or can you go, okay, your opinion of my thing was just your opinion. So I'm just, I can like let that be or, well, ideally, what you should do is that you compromise, or every, or every, or everyone gets to work their idea. Like that, that that's what Greg Gregory Scott says. Uh, UBK, uh, famous uh, plugin designer, hardware creator, and podcaster, music podcaster. He says, "Everyone, you know, let everyone have their idea, yeah. and the best idea will win." Yeah, and and, and because I'm, it'll I'm, be obvious to everyone. And I think that's. That's the best way to really do it. Like, I know when we've disagreed in the past, fuck, man, I'm trying to think what song it was. But there was a song, I can't remember if it was maybe Synchronize or if it was um, Let the Light In or it, it was one of our tunes that we both had very different ideas for the leads, the lead lines and how some of the mix was going to be handled. And we went off and just did our own versions of the song. And it wasn't like, I'm going to work on this song for three months and then present it to you. It was like less than a week. And what came out of it was like, I remember you going, you saying to me like, I see what you're trying to do. And actually your baseline, it was the fucking baseline and synchronize, I'm pretty sure. It was like, your baseline works here. So let's use that baseline. But. I really like my bass sound or something like that. And I said, yes, I agree with you. So you kind of, you have to work on the criticism. You have to go beyond what exactly don't you like? And you go into those things because really what you should do, instead of saying blankly, I don't like this. 
Or I disagree with or you. Or I disagree with you. You should go, I disagree with you. What I don't like is the sound of your snare. For me, it's floppy. May, and then offer a solution to that thing. Like criticism should always, should ideally always come with an, the exact problem that you're hearing or seeing and then offer a solution that the other person may not have thought about. The next thing with criticism is that it should always be, this is what I don't like. This is maybe an idea for it. Go back and work on these things and then bring it back to me and let's see. Like the, the person needs an opportunity to to adjust it rather than, which happens between you and I, and I'm sure happens with other people, rather than someone just going, this is shit, I don't like what you've done, give it to me, I'll fix it. But what makes you the gatekeeper of, of the... Of the- of the quality, why do they have to bring it back to you at all? Why can't they just be like, cool, I'm going to go off and do whatever? Well, I'm talking about like in a you know, collaborative, but something between you and I. If, 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 yeah, you, if I you, suppose that for me, that, that brings up a bigger question of like, um, whether it's taste or like, uh, it's not going to get over the line. Like, the reason uh, we've had situations where like we've asked people for feedback. And then we've gone, I don't respect that person's opinion anyway, and I think they're wrong. Yeah. And then you go, well, you're now taking it off my feedback list because I don't respect your opinion, so why did I ask? Because yeah. I'm just looking for approval. Well, that's the, that's the difference between looking for feedback and looking for um, affirmation. So I can, you know, I can send a song to my friend who likes drum and bass and knows fuck all about production and be like, man, look at this song I made. And he'll be like, that's fucking sick. Or I can send it to someone who's going to listen to it and be like, I don't really like that song because of this and give me critical feedback. We, we always tell people whenever they ask, like, how do, how do I get better or how do you progress in production? And it's stop asking your friends what they think about your music and start asking people you look up to. Yeah, totally. I also think um, another thing to consider with feedback is uh, often the this the solution they offer will be wrong, but the criticism, the problem they pointed out, will be correct. Exactly, and that goes that goes for almost anything in life when it comes to feedback. Like someone goes, "You're, you know, you want to be better at time management. Um, you like you're always late. You need to buy a diary," and you're like. Well, I think I am always late, so that's something I'm going to look at. But your solution of me buying a diary might be one of the facets, but it's not going to solve the problem for me. Yeah. Just the same in music, like, your drums sound shit. I think you should use these drums instead. You're like, oh, you said the drums sound shit. Actually, the drum mix isn't as tight as you it could be. And I think what you're hearing when you say the drums sound shit is that I have an extremely floppy kick and no hi-hats. That's why it's important to offer. I like the I like the offering of a solution because that's like the first step. If something's a problem in any creative field or maybe in anything, if there's a problem, it's it's probably a problem because the person hasn't understood or didn't know how to deal with it. It's a blind spot, so they've just like so they've just like I don't really know how to do that, so I'm just gonna just leave it. So if you offer a solution, like for instance. I don't like your snare drum. I think mm. you should change the snare drum to be a higher pitched snare drum and the pitch mm. should be at 600 hertz. You, you go and put... That's more like 12, 1,200, but yes, essentially. That was so loud in my ears. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, but you might go put a 600 hertz snare in a song and go, you know what, that doesn't work. But it's highlighted the fact that the lower snare doesn't work because I've got all this muddy mid bass that's honking around 200 or 300. So what I'm going to do is EQ that out and actually just 
pitch my snare down until it's, I think it sounds good. And you realize the right pitch for the snare was actually four, 412. And I just needed to cut this mid bass out. So, like, through an action, you. Still a very high pitched snare, but yes. Through an action, there's a problem. Someone gives you an action. That action then leads to you finding the ultimate solution. So, this, there. Their suggestion wasn't necessarily right, but it led you down a path where you could find a solution. It might also, like you said, it might not be the right, it might, that might not be a problem. Think about how many times I've I've suggested, fuck this song needs a new snare. And I've only been right about that, Jeff, maybe twice, maybe three times, but for the 20 other times I've suggested it, you've gone, it's not that. It's actually that there's too much top end in it and I need to side chain the top end to the snare more or I actually have too much low end and that's that's doing something else. Like it's off it's masking. It's masking this. Yes. 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 So like specific, speci- highlighting specific problems and giving them specific solutions leads the person to go remedy those problems in my opinion. And I And again, I think it's, the person that made the problem needs a chance to to remedy it. Otherwise, one, they never learn. And two, they need they need the opportunity to be like for redemption, if you will, and be like, no, I, I, I believe I can do it. And you go back and you give them feedback and then they bring you something back and you go, yeah, that's it. Okay, now it's time for me to work on it. Or now I think it's getting somewhere that I get like, well done. That kind of feedback is so important. And actually, that's something that I don't... I really respect people that work by themselves can do. Like if I... I, um, I recently listened to some someone's um, album that they're working on. And it's really good. Um, and I'm going to have a conversation with them and ask like how... Where did you go for feedback? Like, did you get much feedback on all these? Like, who's your bouncing board for all this? Because, like, as much feedback as I've, I haven't really offered this person that much feedback in the in the past. Or a, a bit, I think we both have, but not like, not like you and I offer stuff, and it's not as exact. And I think it'd be really hard to not have like a sp- specific kind of technically minded um, person to, to kind of go to with, with these issues. But I think there's also a certain amount of, let's call it feedback, that we do that rather than being yes and and moving forward, it's nah, but let me try. So rather than like walking up the steps and then ho- walking up the steps holding hands, to climb to step 100, knowing that we're going to take, um, you know, a few steps forward, a few steps back, and then we're going to, like, change directions on the steps, like the stairs are going to change directions, but we're, you know, generally generally moving forward. Sometimes we'll be walking up steps holding hands, then we'll stop, have a bit of an argument, walk off different directions creating two different versions and then meet at another point it's like quite it's like it can equate to a slower more diluted in some cases a better product but when you're working by yourself the buck stops with you and your there's more opportunity for that flow because especially if you get good at giving your own feedback, like I know I'm going to come back to that thing. It doesn't sound right now, but I'm going to work on this bit here. Um, And then, you know, you've got no one saying, go back to that bit or that bit still doesn't sound right to me. Like I know I'm going to get to that. So I think you might present a more, uh, to stick with the stair analogy, you might get to step 50 stair 50 and then share it with someone so there's less deviation allowed because if you share step three with someone you can really go anywhere and then it becomes a a, a, a bunch of opinions and that's where opinions and feedback can get quite messy especially when they're like 
my vision versus your vision or um or vice versa i think it's also yeah i mean this is why it's hard to collaborate on creativity with people very rarely are people you know you and i are as close as you're going to get to two people without them actually being twins and biologically the same and yet our opinions are vastly different our tastes are vastly different i like things you don't like you like things i don't like and sometimes you'll like something and I'll be like, you are absolutely bonkers that you can't hear. Yeah. That it sounds better like and this I, and I'm, it looks better like this. And I'm exactly like- the same with you. And it's so fucking hard to go and do like a creative endeavor with someone when there's, when there's like, there are those differences. And that's why it's hard to collab with trying to think of like collaborations we've done with other people what what's the last collab we did fucking discipline so i think i think the best collaborations come about with a yes and perspective and knowing that someone is going to take a bit of the lead on it yeah for sure when, when everyone it's like leading a group like what are we going to do tonight and someone's like i think we should go to this pub this this spot and then I've got tickets for this nightclub thing so everyone should come with me. Yeah. And if everyone's like, yeah, cool, let's go, that sounds fun. But when there's too many opinions, not saying you have to do what just one person says, but it, like, it can become a compromise along the way or it can become just a shit fight if everyone wants to be the leader. Yeah. But you have to relinquish the the reins sometimes and that's why I think the, the, yes, the yes and approach and also the, well, I didn't get my idea over the line this time, that's fine. I'm sure the next one and like there there will be more. It's it, I think you can pick as we have we've had arguments. I remember let the light in had a different baseline. The original had a different baseline and we must have lasted a week changing midi notes and being like you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. It doesn't even fucking matter. But yeah, but, but as well, you say that it doesn't matter, but we changed the midi notes because they were wrong. And it got, and it became a better song, like that's fucking oath it did because it was my baseline. <laughs> no, but that's that's <laughs> the interesting thing. Like, I know sometimes arguments have come out from you and I, especially because you're, you know, if there was the classic script, it would be like you saying to me, "You're changing it, you're changing it. Stop changing the song." Yeah, you're moving. You're you're making a completely new song. Yeah, but which you have done, which I have done countless times, but. I've also done that and the songs have become better. So like yeah. it's it's hard because like you're you're not wrong because sometimes I have been writing a completely different song and I have been doing the incorrect thing but but also e- equally as successfully I have been writing a complete I've been writing a better version of the song that you didn't hear. So it's like you know it's like a 50% it's almost like a 50% success rate on like taking these chances. And I think this comes back to Gregory Scott's point about like everyone gets their shot. That's why if someone has this alternate opinion, especially if it's about something as altering as like, I'm going to change the key of this song or I'm going to drop with a completely different thing or this is what I'm hearing. That's why it's so important to be like, I'm saving off this project. This is my version and that can be your version. And... We push them and then... And which version gets finished? The best one. Sometimes neither of them. Sometimes neither of them though, but that's the nature of songs. Just because you start writing a song and it gets finished to a certain degree, it doesn't mean that it has to get finished. Like I was, I'd was, i listened back to, to the demo that I sent you last year that you were like... That I got feedback on from four different people. One... You were like, I don't really like this sound and this song doesn't do much for me. One other person was like, this is sick. And the other person wanted a version to play. And I listened back to it and I was like, Jeff's kind of right. It's kind of like a fun exercise. I'm glad we didn't. And that song was basically finished to a, to a certain degree. 
And but it it just wasn't a song because it wasn't good enough. And I needed probably more time to see that perspective. And it's not to say that we can't. I won't take the bones of that song, and it will become something else. Because often, especially for us, bad songs or songs that we don't really like often become good songs eventually. It's kind of like melting. It's kind of like melting something, creating something, and then melting it down and using those parts to make something better. And like, and something, and, and I think I'm coming to terms with that's the way we kind of work, and that's okay that we work that way. Rather than being like as prolific as I think we'd probably like to be, and just go sit down and be like, "This is I'm fucking writing a hit song right now." And well, I don't think it's that. I think it's all there's also a um a directness uh, to working on a um a vision that doesn't have to be a collaboration from the start. So to share again it comes back to like sharing an idea a bit further along in the process and I think uh you particularly can be guilty of sharing something early and then I'm like mm, cool yeah keep working on it and you're like I was hoping that the feedback was going to be more like x and that's this is I suppose that's an interesting point about feedback as well sometimes and this technique is like listening with someone else's ears. You can send someone the tune or you can be like, hey, I'm going to send you this song. And they go, yeah, cool. And before you send it, sometimes you know what they're going to say because you go to say it to themselves, yourself, especially if you're about to play a song to someone in the studio. And then you go, the intro is not done. The drums are kind of shit. That vocal is not. And then you go, actually, don't even listen to it. I know exactly what I have to change because you need to change the intro. You need to change the drums and you need to change the vocal. Well, it, yeah. I mean, I did that recently when I sent over something, a, a collab we're doing. I literally sent it and then said, the mix isn't that great. This this bit's is still muddy and I need to work out what these two two elements are kind of how they're talking to each other. And that's like, that's the feedback. And I, and I think people, people do that. So they, they're preempting one. It's probably a bit of recognizing something that I need to work on. So maybe I need more time to work on the song before I send it away. Mm -hmm. And it's also preempting it. So people can go. So people don't need to bring up those things. And people who aren't listening aren't listening for that stuff. I, I was talking to, um, but that's 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 where you should not play the song for them at all. I was talking, I think, to Hamish Jack Mirror, and I sent him something I'd been working on. He sent me something he'd been working on, and both of us said the mix isn't that great. Uh, you know, like saying all this stuff, but and he wrote after afterwards. He was like, "It's funny that we both say give this little preamble." when both of us know that these are demos, that they're, we both know that we're good producers, we both know that eventually they're going to sound better, yet we still feel like we have to open with this caveat of like, oh, just imagine if this sounds better, but what do you think of the initial idea? Or like, what do you think of just like the groove? Or what do you think of, does this song click for you? Because a song, a good song, should fucking Afterglow by Wilkinson. That could be made with all the drums from the Ableton stock kit and the Ableton stock piano, no processing at all. And, and you'd it's be a good it's a good song. And it's you'd just be like, Oh, that's that's kinda catchy. And you could send that with the with the caveat of like, imagine if I was like if the drums were better, if the drums were more drum based drums. What do you think of the song? Someone could write lyrics over that. Well, yeah, exactly. That that's what I mean. Sometimes I think um you, we can be guilty of anyone can be guilty of asking for feedback too early, and that's another good thing to think about with feedback because that's again in the process there is a reassurance that you want. You're like you know you've done some work and you're like 
I'm hearing some really cool stuff. Hey, what do you think? And you almost look back at someone and be like, tell me it's good and I'll keep going. Yeah. And if they go, eh, whatever, then you can lose all the steam but, in your sales. But also- I would, su- I would suggest to, some, to most people, don't ask for that reassurance. Give yourself the reassurance and keep going until it's a bit more bulletproof. Because if, if your idea can fail based on what someone else is saying so easily, then fuck your idea. It wasn't that good to start with. And that's extremely that's extremely harsh, but in some respects, I believe that. So this is something that's quite interesting because it's like specific to just you and I. Because sometimes you've said that to me, you've been like, you don't even believe in the idea. You're kind of that kind of thing. But well, yeah, because I gave you feedback and then you didn't come, but you haven't come back to me in in six months with any revisions. So I'm like, ah, you kind of cared that much about that song. But it's interesting because like between us, I've been searching for your approval for 31 years. So the dynamic between us with feedback is completely different and probably something I feel like you haven't recognized that much in the past that I've been searching. I don't even only search for affirmation and feedback from you in a musical sense, but I'm, I'm looking for, for approval and I'm mm-hmm. so, so primed to look for approval from my older brother who I fucking look up to and have worshipped since the day I was fucking old enough to recognize that you were my older brother. I'm fighting, I'm fighting, you know, what? Yeah, 20, 30 years of of looking up to this person and, and that, and, and, and now I send him songs and go, what do you think? And like, you know, it, go, it goes beyond approval for just music it's like involved in approval for 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 that your main male influence in your life i think that's why i probably respond respond so sometimes like quite emotionally to feedback that you give because you probably don't recognize it but it's like it's like it is like uh like a someone who's extremely important to you kind of saying like you're not good enough that's how it sometimes feels. Yeah, totally. I and I know that that's, that's probably not your, that's definitely not your intention. But like, unfortunately, the way we have grown up and the way that the role you play in my life is the role of, of a primary caregiver. <laughs> no, I don't know what the, the word is, like primary masculine influence. And it's kind of means that I will be searching for your approval more so than anyone else in my life. Well, that's a that's a very good point, I think, and very um, it does ring true, and it's something we have talked about uh, before. Um, and I think this ties in with uh, the self talk thing because sometimes my self talk towards myself, being my internal feedback, is shut the fuck up, work harder. Yeah. Therefore, I give you that same feedback, thinking that you will be able to use that as fuel. The yeah. same way I've used that as fuel. But that fuel source is pretty shitty. It's like uh, pissing in your petrol tank and then adding some fuel and then adding a little bit more piss and then adding fuel and then being like, yeah, my car runs, but it, it's going to break down and it doesn't run very well and... You, you for long for a long time you believed that that is how you ran, and I think over the past year you've definitely not used that as much for your fuel source. Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm over the piss and petrol situation, but um, I'm you're saying 95. It's, it f- <laughs> you're you're on the 98 premium now. Um, I would say that uh, I still, I can still at my most frustrated give you some of that energy in the feedback and I can I can give anyone some of that feedback like I've I used to pride myself on giving most people a lot of feedback but I've been finding recently I have less bandwidth for it because I'm like yep okay here's some I've got less time and if you find me on a good day I'll give you a few paragraphs about some ideas but sometimes I can just fall short and just like, wow, well, I, I don't have the energy to um, help this person along this thing. Or, and also I'm like, yeah, just keep, just keep going with it. 
um, which I don't think is very helpful. So often I won't say anything. I feel the same. Back to how I receive, I don't know how I, yeah, how I receive feedback from others. It can be incredibly um, dismissive. I think, because I think I know better in some cases. And unfortunately, or fortunately, I have been proven correct in those cases. But that, again, so this is, this is why it's so fucking difficult. Not always, not always, but I have been like, because again, you're fucking wrong. Yes. Fuck you. This one's heaps better. Yes. And I mean, we're, we're saying fuck you, you're fucking wrong is like an aggressive, aggressive way. And that, but that's just our way of describing it. But sometimes <laughs> it's so difficult because. Sometimes we are right. Sometimes you can be just a stubborn prick. And I'm saying you as in us, or generally. Sometimes you can just be a stubborn prick. Brick. Prick. But when you're proven, it's like you it's like you get proved that your taste is correct. You know, it, it's like yep. in equal parts, you can sometimes, it's again, it's like a 50% thing. Sometimes we're right in saying like, this is shit, do better. And sometimes we're wrong. So like, I think it's important to have the confidence and assertiveness, I guess, in yourself to know that your taste is 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 correct. Man, because, you know, I, I can, like I said before, I can be so unsure about whether these pants look good on me. But show me a fucking song. And I think most of the time I'm like, I like that or I don't like that. Like it's, it, it is one, it's like one facet in my life that I feel passionately, it's kind of like with movies as well, with passionately I can feel like that's, I don't feel like that's correct or I do feel like that's correct. It's another subjective thing though. <sighs> it is. And again, it's, it's, it's these are all subjective things that they're, they're not it's less of a right and wrong thing but then at the same time jeff sometimes it is and sometimes you're fucking right and sometimes i'm fucking right and sometimes greg is sometimes right like it's 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 difficult with feedback man we've been given we've offered feedback to people and they've gone thank you but i disagree with it i'm going to move on and I've literally thought, well, your song's going to suck now. Yeah. Yeah. I've thought exactly the same thing. And that's not an arrogant thing to say. I think that's just a, and it's not saying that we have, and, and it's not saying we have the answer and that we're fucking geniuses. Because, uh, because I've had the same thing from other people. Yeah. They've gone, I guarantee you, we've shown Carl signs and I think we should do this and be like, well, I think that's not going to work for us. And yeah. we'll do this, and then it's like, oh, that song. And yeah, sometimes fine, Carl, but... and sometimes Carl's been right, but sometimes Carl's been wrong. I think it's important. Yeah, a, at the exactly, end of the day, that's... it's a, it's. Be careful who you ask for feedback. Only ask people that you whose opinion you you value. Yeah, whose opinion you value, and who, yeah, and who you can kind of work with it on, and also recognize whether it's you're having this opinion, how you respond to their feedback. Are you responding with your ego or are you responding honestly and creatively? Because are you responding like, well, fuck you? Or are you like, I stand behind my work, so I disagree. It's really important to to recognize how, whether you're responding emotionally or logically. And I think you can sometimes have an emotional response instantly, like you and I often have with each other, Often we'll have the, well, fuck you. I think about the paper birds thing. When you woke up and you got all my feedback in that email and you were like, fuck you, you were really mad. And then you you responded emotionally. And then after looking at it logically, you broke down some of the things and we're like, well, I agree with that. I disagree with that. I agree with that. And we moved forward. There's always going to be that emotional response to feedback. And I think it's just recognizing that that happens, moving on from it and thinking critically and backing and just backing yourself. It's funny to think some, with Paper Birds, I remember thinking when I got some of your feedback, I was like, this is just going to make 
so much more work for me. Yeah. And I just, I was pissed off at so many facets of that because you'd sent me some bits and I was like, well, that that is just not very good, but I can see what you're trying to do. So I suppose I will spend hours remaking it. And then I'm like, is this what you wanted? And you're like, yeah. And I'm like, cool. We'll do that next time. Again, that harsh critic, like, why don't you do it? And again, like, this is, that's unfair and mean, but that feeds into the the way I might take feedback because I do think I take feedback incredibly poorly at times unless I'm like, wow, yep, okay, that's... That makes sense. But, and I'm working on that. And I'm also working on that internally, like uh, listening to a demo and being like, you know, give it uh, give it three or four days, don't listen to it. And then you hear it again and be like, wow, that is to this, this, and this. I know what to do. Like I didn't need someone else's feedback. I just needed some space away from it. And now I can give my own feedback. And I can also wow, I really do need to change that whole thing and I don't mind spending the time on it. But if I'm, you know, it can feel like a bit like a a fruitless journey if you're trying to listen with someone else's ears, reinterpret their ideas and then present it back to them and then they go, it's not really what I was thinking. You're like, I've had that so many times with graphic design. It's just made me want to set fire to myself and then grab the other person and set them aflame. But, and that's that's what the hardest thing about collaboration is. I, w- I once heard that there was um, some drum and bass artists who basically one guy starts the idea and the other one finishes it and then they both mix it. And I'm like, whoa, that, like, that might be, that would be really hard because I think, I'm like, my my baby, my idea is just going to get ruined. Or like my vision's not going to see through. And, but if, if artwork, if art is just something we create, then shouldn't that, that be okay as well? And the, the, the key would be to work with someone who's, who you believe will maintain some of your vision as they, as they work forward. But we've never had a song, Jono, where, You've started it, and I've just been like, "Here you go," or vice versa. The only, the only song. You know what the smoothest song we've ever had was? Melt. No, because you wrote the intro and I wrote the drop. No. The flume bootleg. Uh, yes, that's a, that's true. Actually, the most recent flume bootleg. Rushing back. You told me you had an idea, and you sent over the idea. And I was like, yeah, I'm into this if I can clean some stuff up. Because I, I listened to the original thing that I sent over and it was basically forba- verbatim. Oh, it is. It's just, it's a better mix and different drums and- Yeah. And I think actually you, stuff. you just made, and I then thank you for this because there was an element in the drums that I really liked where you sent me a mix back and I was like, you fucking turned off that thing that I thought was really cool, but it's actually in the final mix. Um, and in hindsight, it doesn't fucking matter. It's like this weird and crash that's what, thing that's, that's on the what snare. Everyone dances to yeah. Everyone, everyone's <laughs> dancing to the crash on the snare. But like, that was the easiest thing. But again, that was easy because the idea was undeniable. Yeah, your idea was because very good. I'm a and fucking I, I, genius, I was- bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it was partly it was, because partly because the the original song's good. Yes, very 100%, good. Hundred percent. And so working with good stuff. But your idea, I was like, I can hear this, and if I can just fine tune this. Do you have that demo? Do we have that demo on Dropbox? That should be this week's demo. We should dive straight into. it. We should listen to the original thing that you sent over. Okay. As a way to finish this podcast. All right. Let's let's listen to it. Right now, hang on. I'm just going to bung you over the um the because link. it was it was pretty close, and I could hear what you were going for, and I was like, this could work if we get this sounding the right way. And I remember 
me saying to you, like, I feel like the chops are, aren't, like, direct enough. And you're like... Yeah, because I'd done f- something with the fades on the chops. Yeah, there was some... And then I corrected that. And there was some, like... Or also some, like, disagreement. I was like, oh, I don't really like that. So I changed it. But then my version was better... Like, because I chopped the vocal a little bit as well, like rushing, rushing. And you were like, oh, I really like that. And I was like, cool, that's something I thought you weren't going to like. And so there was a, this is, this is a perfect example of a lot of yes and. Yeah. Rather than no. Or, but that's as well as like being able to take someone's project and be like, I'm going to develop it. Rather than, Jono, I didn't change your song. Yeah, but that's because it was a good idea. You didn't need to change it. But I've sent you stuff before that hasn't been as good of an idea and you've changed it and it's become better. So, this, yes. again, this and comes I've sent, back- I've sent, I've sent you things and you've gone, oh, I'm not really feeling it. I'm just going to spend a weekend working on it. And then you've completely changed the song. And I'm yeah. like, cool, yeah, that's a new song. Yeah. So, why don't, you, why don't you go back and work within the framework of the other song? Yeah, but that, I mean, this is, again, the, always the disagreement we have. You always think I'm changing stuff too much and I'm always thinking it needs to be changed because the original idea isn't good enough. Well, I say write another song. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, if a if song- If you've just if tuned it, in, can you tell that we've <laughs> had a little bit of a conversation before the podcast that may have related to some piece of music? If a, poor, if a, if a song is a poor idea, but is springboard for three different songs, then maybe the function of that original song is just to be a springboard. Wow, that's a great fucking point. And that's true. I've Man, there's- Something that I sent you recently was a springboard into something else. Yeah. That you also got sent. And I mean, like that, that's sometimes that's that, uh, to me, that's what following a thread is. Like, think of us, I swear there's a song, Jeff, that we've tried to write over and over again. And it's been the springboard for multiple songs. But we just can't get the original song right. There's a project. There's a fucking project. I can't remember what it was, but it was the bones. It's the bones of like so many of our songs have started in that, just trying to trying to make this idea work and we just kind of end up writing something different. And maybe the base of it is like a sample that we've never used before. But we we sometimes, whenever, whenever we would go through our demos, we wouldn't be in the studio together, we'd always open up stuff we've bounced out and be like, fuck, that song's sick. Or like, oh, I remember this one. It was always one we came back to and we're like, fuck, we, yeah, that's a song, man. And I swear we wrote it like four or five years ago. But we've just never been able to, to do it. But in the meantime, that idea has, has, has been the root of other stuff we've written. And, that's, and it's okay that that's never an idea. And there's also songs that- Never a song, sorry. That um, I think there's songs that- Again, it's a criticism of you, and I don't think I don't want it to sound like a major criticism of you. But you seem to fixate on a kind of song you want to write, yeah. and you will turn any song into that kind of song. You're yeah, like, I want to make this kind of song. I'm like, dude, like just yeah. write that song. Don't stop trying to turn every song into this version yeah. of that song. And uh, and I think that's and a- that's why I've said to you recently. I'm like, just write your song. Do you want to write? That's just how I kind of work creatively, and I definitely, I definitely recognise that. And I'm trying to, um, trying to write music. I'm trying to do that, so I'm like, okay, actually, I just want to write this type of song. So I'm gonna take these ideas that I've done with this and stick within the framework a bit more. And that's definitely something I need to work on. Um, let's listen to this demo. Okay, and then. Uh We'll come back and uh, talk a little bit about it and maybe wrap this podcast up. Yep, sounds good. So this is the first demo I sent Jeff of our bootleg of Flumes rushing back in November 2019. Um, for copyright reasons, we're only going to play a short clip so that this whole episode doesn't get taken down, but you'll, uh, you'll get to see where the idea came from.
I made no room for the vocal in the middle 16 it's or the last warped. 16. It's and also it's like placed warped. slightly incorrectly. Yeah, just that, that last little bit. Yeah, but it's interesting to hear like the mix is the the mix you did is so much better. I mean that's a pretty rough mix, but you can see like how the idea was there. I could the hear idea. I could yeah. hear what was gonna go on. Because it's exactly the same. Like I'm playing the finished one. The arrangement's the same. It's I basically a little exa- bit. exactly the same, except the drums are better and there's like space. Mine feels it's been mixed. Yeah, it's been, yeah, exactly. It's been mixed, not been farted out. But that's okay. I'd rather a uh, really, really good farted out demo than a really well mixed fart. Yeah, I would agree. And that's a perfect case in point of like, that was a pretty undeniable demo. Well, let's try to run another one of those. Hope for the next demo I send you is undeniable. Yeah, let's hope so. Um, thanks for talking about feedback with me. Thanks for um, taking my feedback over the years, and I hope I can be softer in some of my feedback. And I hope you can feel less judged when I give you feedback as well, because I think more recently I try and come from feedback from a pretty neutral position, and 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 you hear you still hear it as this is me as this is me saying something and. To you, that is, I'm not actually saying. No, I, I, I want to make sure that you know this. Like, I, I really like the feedback you do on Slack because that feels like real feedback. Sometimes when you do feedback in person, it does feel more attacky. But I think that's just the tone. And also, man, it's how you feel. Like, clearly, we shouldn't have feedback conversations when late at night for either one of us. Or after we've got less tether, we need more ba- we need more more rope to have a solid feedback session. Otherwise, it's like me ca- me calling. I recognized the other day when we had a phone conversation. I was like, I shouldn't have brought up fucking tunes with Jeff right before he's going to bed because I yeah. could hear that you're being you started to get your voice started to get a bit pissed off, and I was like, I shouldn't be talking about this right now. I fucked up here. Let's leave it try to move on as quickly as possible. But I can see, like, there's times to bring shit up. And I would say that I don't bring stuff up at the best of times. And I'm trying to work on that. But thank you for taking my feedback. And thank you for giving me feedback because more often than not, you're on the money. So thank you. Thank you for having this conversation with me. Thank you. And thank you, dear listener, for joining in. Uh, If you've got feedback that you'd like to give anyone in your life, remember... Some of the things we talked about. And, um, yeah, I think it's it's hard to give feedback and it's hard to f- take it. And if you can get good at that, you can definitely go a long way because you can be really good at giving feedback and not good at taking it. And I've done this recently and then go, and then when you give feedback to someone else, be like, fuck, I need to take some of that advice myself. Yeah. You, that's that's a lesson that you can just put into life. Yep. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. I love you, and I'll speak to you soon. I love you too, buddy. See ya. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on your podcast app and keep up to date with all new episodes. They're going to be coming out once a week. We are Echo and Sidetrack on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, On Twitter, we are Echo Sidetrack. Go listen to our music on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, YouTube, or wherever your ears consume happiness. Lots of love, people.